Hello Sofa Squad and welcome back to the sofa. Today we're going to be talking about more of this case going on in the search for Brian Laundrie. Now we've heard more stuff from his sister. The lawyer keeps in my opinion spinning things and coming out with more statements that are coming from the family as we get more information from over here. There has been new developments in a possible campsite being found so it's just continuing. It's still a hot mess and unfortunately sadly for Gabby Petito's family he has not been brought forward to get some answers. So let's talk about the recent interviews that his sister has given and we're going to start with one that she did with Good Morning America. Now this came on the heels of a more like impromptu interview, I guess you could say, uh, with some protesters outside of her home. Uh, and she came out and finally spoke to them in hopes of, you know, just getting them to go away, I suppose, and having some peace and quiet around her home for her children. But then she did this interview with Good Morning America as well. I've been cooperating with the police since day one. I have been in touch with law enforcement. She's reiterating about this trip that they took to the camping site for DeSoto uh, to see Brian, her parents. They brought She brought her husband, kids. So it's like a little family thing. Just went for a couple of hours and we ate dinner and had s'mores around the campfire and left. And there was nothing peculiar about it. There was no feeling of grand goodbye. There was no nothing. I'm frustrated that in hindsight, I didn't pick up on anything. It was just a regular visit. And she's saying that, you know, there was nothing really out of the ordinary there. Uh, nothing was really going on. Gabby wasn't a center of conversation in that. And so I found that part to be interesting, mostly because we at least know that Brian allegedly either did something or knew something. Something took place. Now, we can only make conjectures as to possibly what the parents knew or didn't know or whatever. But nonetheless, for Brian to kind of just be normal, I'm just like, yeah, that's very chilling. So she's reiterating that about that. And we'll talk more about what she was saying about it in regards to the video she did outside of her home. Now, another statement that she said that I want to kind of revisit uh, is the statement about her saying I wish that he had shown up with the van like to my place first because I don't think we would have been here so and again this is just me kind of reading into things but I find that interesting because what that says to me like reading between the lines my interpretation my opinion is she's saying I would have called it out I would have been like what's up let's get to the bottom of this so it almost is like she's in a sense saying the parents are enablers or they didn't question things or not enough was done in that realization of why do you have Gabby's van and where's Gabby which I think we can all agree at this point and once again she's urging him to turn himself in as you can see not only has a victim been created out of Gabby that's confirmed obviously her family but look at how he has continued to victimize his family his sister his nieces, nephews, whoever, it just keeps going and going. Obviously, the greatest loss is Gabby. Uh, but it just is going to show that this dude doesn't really seem to care about anyone but himself. This is obvious. He is still on the run. He has not turned himself in. He has not come forward to give anyone any kind of answers. So let's talk about a few talking points for the video that went around uh, of his sister and her husband coming out of their home to talk to protesters, um, the I don't know if that's what you really call them, people wanting answers, the people hanging outside the home, you know, yelling, screaming, all that kind of thing. So she comes out and she's like, look, her whole premise is this. Her kids are inside. They've been crying for three days. They are scared of these people because of them yelling stuff at the kids and the family and all this. They have found out this way that they have lost Gabby and it's basically very traumatic. We don't have a lawyer. We have nothing to hide. We're told not to talk to anybody. And I'm upset that we have to come out and do this and then explain myself to the FBI. Her just as upset, frustrated, and heartbroken as everybody else. And I am losing my parents and my brother and my ch children's aunt and my future sister. And so she's wanting to give them answers and she's saying, look, the FBI has told us not to speak to anybody. So we are going against their wishes. The FBI knows every single thing we've cooperated this entire time, and the world doesn't need to know right now what the FBI knows. Now, 
I do think that that is true. I think that that can also hinder cases. And I'm gonna say that I do believe what she is saying at this point. I think that she probably has cooperated. I do think that there are parts that she's not saying out loud because the FBI has told her not to, and it will hinder the investigation. And until more answers come out, I mean, yeah, it's just nothing that the public needs to know. Even though we all want answers for Gabby and her family, obviously, and it's totally sus that you know the parents aren't willing to give that, and we're going to talk about their attorney here in a minute. Uh, so that was kind of the premise of her coming out. I did feel like she, when she started talking to them, she was getting some of these answers. Uh, you know, their level of aggression towards her began to alleviate, and some of the things that she had to say to me were very interesting. Now, this is where we hear her confirm that yeah, Brian and her parents came to their home September 1st. They were driving the Mustang. There was no vans. There's no sign of any of that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, that was that. There was just no level of, oh, he pulled up with the van. And so remember in the GMA interview where she's saying, I wish that he had come here with the van or, you know, did that first so that she could have maybe pieced that together. Now, she's also reiterating through all of this that, look, I'm finding out the same stuff when y'all are. And on that September 1st date, she did say, look, it wasn't until the next day we found out with like everybody about the whole van situation. So she begins talking about the aspect of, you know, not only is she losing her sister-in-law, her kids have lost their aunt, she's losing her brother, her parents, and this is when they stop and they're like, well, what about your parents and da 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 And this is when she confirms, yeah, my parents aren't talking to me. Uh, this is per their lawyer. Their lawyer does not want them talking to me. So I found that very interesting. I mean, as we can see, this lawyer is literally 100% their mouthpiece for everything. He is not letting them speak at all. Now, this too is where we first hear about her confirming this, you know, sighting or this visit at the campground with her brother and her kids husband, like I said, the parents, and that basically she's like, look, it was normal. We had s'mores. The kids had school the next day. We left around eight. We got there around two in the afternoon. Just nothing was really going on. Gabby wasn't a center of conversation. You know, there's nothing that tipped me off. Now, she would say in hindsight, uh, also on her GMA interview, like, I wish I had picked up on something. I wish I could have sensed something that was going on. Uh, you know, but she said there wasn't any kind of vibe of, this is it, we're saying goodbye, this is the last hurrah. It was just none of that. I find that very fascinating because honestly, leading up to this, I thought that there was some kind of vibe like that. So it's interesting to see that whatever he was planning at that point, that he just literally was either not including anyone in on it, and I mean like his parents, her, or if the parents were, we don't know confirmed at this point if they were totally in on it. But regardless, the fact that he could keep that front up speaks of volumes to me. She would also say when they were asking about a storage shed and all that, she would say, yeah, you know what? They had a storage locker. I have no idea where that was. And then she also confirmed, again, it's been confirmed multiple times, but in the beginning it was just rumor about Brian traveling home during this trip, flying back home and then flying back out there. I've got a few things to say about that, but we're going to speak on that in regards to what the lawyer said. Now, she would say that, yes, she spoke with him. She FaceTimed with Gabby. The kids did, too. Nothing seemed out of the sorts. Now, I do have a few things to say about this, but we're going to speak about that in regards to what the lawyer said about this trip. So the lawyer saying that he flew out on the 17th and flew back to Gabby, that area on the 23rd. Uh, the lawyer is also stating that they, mean uh, Gabby and Brian, shared the expenses for these flights because they were sharing expenses. And now he's saying that Brian went out there to clean out a storage thing, a storage unit, whatever, to save some money because they were thinking about extending their trip. He also wanted to get some items to go back out there with. Now, when Brian flew back out to Utah, remember, this is just four days before she was last seen. So the timing of that is very weird. And now let's take one moment to talk about this. This is where I just find this completely odd. So from what I have seen, which is the same stuff that y'all have seen, you know, Gabby was completely freaking out about being left alone during that police interview. She didn't want to be left alone. And she was very scared about being separated just for the evening. Tomorrow. I don't, I don't want to be separated. You can have anxiety? Yeah, yeah, no more team, please. So this is where I think things are odd in that they have this little incident. He flies home 
she seems to be okay. I believe her father had ordered some food for her during this time. So it just seems very weird to me that he would fly home, number one, to try and save money. Again, we don't know how long they were thinking about extending their trip, so maybe going home to clean some locker out would help save money. I mean, I don't know. I don't have enough of the confirmed details on that. But that just seems very odd from what we've seen of Gabby. Now, maybe she was fine with whatever situation they set up before he flew home and flew back out. Regardless, though, just seeing how her behavior was, it just is odd to me that he made this trip. Now also the lawyer is stating that actually the last time the family saw Brian, and this is when he left for this hike that we all know now he never came back from, was actually on the 13th. And essentially the lawyer is just saying, look, after, you know, going back and, you know, raking over their memory and all this kind of stuff and working with them, they had a date off. So now it's even more like, oh, okay, so he had one more day, you know, to be on his way. Now speaking of all that, there was this whole thing that went down of the lawyer coming out you know his father meaning brian's father has been asked to help in the search and you know he's going to go out there but the police you know they had to postpone it and so on and so forth well then the police came forward and we're like no we didn't ask him to come out here and help us look for him and we didn't postpone it you know and so that was completely weird well then more information came out and it all kind of made more sense Having said all that, this is where I think it's really interesting to see how their lawyer spins different things, you know, and it just kind of has a little bit of a twist on it. Uh, but then once you get the confirmation from the police, whatever, you're like, oh, okay, that, that makes more sense. So we're going to stay tuned. Again, I pray that by the time you watch this video, they have found him and answers start to come towards Gabby's family. Now there is like numerous rewards out there. I mean, it's a huge amount. I think it's like 170,000. Dog the Bounty Hunter has put out, uh, he added like 10 grand to that. Many different organizations are coming together for this because so many people just want to get answers for this girl's family. It has to be excruciating. And I don't know how much longer this can go on with him hiding out, but I do feel like it's going to come to an end soon. And that will be best for everybody. We can find out what exactly happened to Gabby and bring whoever needs to be brought to justice to justice. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And until next time, I'll see you back here on the sofa.